Chef Tony Maas describes his culinary education as the long and winding road cooking school. A winner of the James Beard Foundation Award for Best Chef Northeast, he's been called an idealist with a kitchen. And what comes out of his kitchen is certainly ideal. Make that kitchens plural since he now has two Boston area restaurants, Craigie on Main in Cambridge and the new Kirkland Tap and Trotter in nearby Somerville. We're delighted to welcome Chef Tony Maas to the dish. Tony, hey, nice to you. see you. Good to be here. What have you brought with you? Wow, this yeah. is quite a spread, well, right? right. <laughs> I thought this was appropriate for a Saturday morning. Uh, we have some uh, lamb shanks that have been braised, uh, one of our favorites, octopus that's been grilled, some scallops that have been um, poached in curry oil, uh, winter chicory salad. I think, you know, instead of having that sort of mescaline that doesn't taste like anything in the, in the wintertime, some really nice winter greens. One of our favorite desserts, we make a cornbread pan purdue, so it's basically like a, a cornbread French toast with some really great dried fruit. Absolutely delicious. So let's talk about your background because sure. you have worked in 17 restaurants. Something and I, like that, yeah. When I was reading your, I mean, you've done every job within a kitchen. True. How did that change in terms of how you ran your own kitchen? Um, well, I, I think, you know, in order to run a kitchen, you really have to understand what everybody is doing. And, and there's no job, I mean, we talk about this all the time within our team, that there's really no job that's more or less important, even though some of them might have more glamour attached to them or something like that. But you know, if, a, if one of our dishwashers doesn't show up, it's amazing what happens right. and how everything just, you know, turns to a really chaotic evening. So um, having those experiences, and, and to be honest, some of those jobs were the most fun. I miss a lot of them. Yeah. You, uh, but you, you, when you went to college, you actually got a d degree in psychology. So you sure. were kind of headed in a different direction? Well, you know, when I began to cook, there weren't these great magazines and, you know, there wasn't um, food TV. It wasn't, it wasn't sexy to be a cook. No one knew that this was something that you could actually do. Mm -hmm. So I always thought that, you know, cooking was something that I loved. And I thought that these jobs were things that I did just to make money to keep on doing other things. So and you, I didn't... You, you'd already fallen in love with cooking. Oh, by... absolutely. Yeah. But I didn't put two and two together until a little bit later that I could actually do this. And, uh, and when, we, when I did figure it out, it's just been, it's been a blast. You know, you are someone, when I read your bio, you just basically said, I used to butcher everything. I sure. made all the stocks. I made all the sauces. How has letting go some of those restraints helped you, or has it helped you to, to give it to other people? Um, I, you know, it's a little bit of both. I mean, there's always going to be a struggle. I think this is probably true of any business, of any entrepreneur, that once you begin um, assigning tasks that you've been doing for so long to other people, that you're going you're gonna, to, first of all, get to watch other people grow. And that's, that's great. I mean, that's, you know, a really fun part of the job. At the same time, I, I love to cook food. I mean, that's why I do this in the first place. So trying to keep my hands in the... Pot, you know, no because pun intended. Because on Main, I mean, yeah. you were three feet from the door. Whenever True. people came into that restaurant, they would see you. Absolutely, absolutely. Now I have to figure out which location I'm in, and that's, you know, that's part of growth. Um, I do get to still cook food. I mean, you know, tonight I will be at the Kirk and Tap and Trotter on the grill. You will. I, I look forward this to that is a very problem, much. Because that's a problem I know with successful chefs is they, the, the, the more successful they get, often the further they get away from the kitchen. Sure. But you, you've been trying really hard to stay there. Well, yeah, and success is relative. I mean, to me. What's the point of having a bunch of restaurants if I still don't get to cook the food? And that's, that's just the way I feel about it. So two seems like a good thing. Um, it's, you know, it's only been a few months of, of actually living the life of two restaurants. And I've probably put, you know, they're only a mile apart, but I've probably put more mileage in my car the past few months than, <laughs> you know, I have in 10 years prior. But it's, uh, it's been a great ride. Nowadays, so many chefs are doing tip-to-tail cooking, but a lot yep. of people say that you were the pioneer of all that. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of funny when I hear that because people have been cooking this type of food for thousands of years. Right. You know, those same tips and those tails. So I think that, um, it, and, and it's the same food that I, you know, would see in a pot simmering on my grandmother's stove. So to hear about it as either being trendy or cool or, or even me being a pioneer seems kind of odd. But uh, I think you do absolutely see a lot of the style of cooking more and more in restaurants. And that's great because they're great parts. Well, as I hand you this dish to sign, we want to ask you if oh, you well, can have you. this meal with anyone past or present. I have a feeling it's going to be your grandmother, but I don't want to steal your you know, answer. Who I, would the person be? You, you came pretty close. It would actually be my grandmother and my grandfather both because... Um, Neither of them got to see everything that we're doing today. And, you know, it's, it's their kitchen, it's their house where so much of this, um, so many of my food memories came out of. So if I could sit down with anybody, it would be, it would be with them. Great, great, great two people to And pay. I, you know, absolutely toast them. So yes. there you go. Cheers. Chef Tony Maas. And hey. for more on Chef Maas and the dish, head to our website at CBS This Morning.